Hey George, great to see you. Hi, nice to see you too. Yeah, tell me a little bit about this CV to X specification. What is that exactly? Okay, yeah, so this is a, a new uh, system that we defined in 3GPP as part of release 14. Okay. Uh, it is basically a, a transport layer and alternative to 802.11p, which is uh, a technology that has been uh, developed over uh, the last 10 years uh, for car-to-car -car communication. Okay. Okay, but um, 11P is, uh, is really was defined 10 years ago. It's a derivative of 11A. Right. Um, and on top of that, this, a, a big system has been built um, that includes uh, security layers and application logic that is standardized between cars. Okay. The, so CV2X is now uh, a new FIMAC that replaces potentially 11P, is an alternative to 11P and it reuses all the upper layers that have been defined over this long period of time. Okay, and what does it let us do when, we're, uh, it, it, when it's applied to the automotive market? Right, so it um, basically allows us to develop a number of safety-related um, use cases to begin with. Okay. In the future, maybe some non-safety use cases also. Uh, but at the beginning, the focus is on uh, providing safety to the cars. It's another sensor that the cars oh, really? can use to, um, to provide either input to the driver mm -hmm. uh, or to, the, to an autonomous system. Okay, so if we're in an autonomous system, it would use this uh, as a way to sense where other vehicles were to avoid collisions and things like that. Could you also use it to uh, speed up the flow of traffic uh, in, in the rush hour and things like that? Right, it's all of the above. So it will be combined with all the other sensors you already have. So you have radar, LiDAR, uh, cameras, of course, yeah. uh, and now this sensor gives you a few different things. So all the other sensors uh, gives you line of sight information, tells right. you everything that you can see with your eyes, they yes. can also see, yeah. uh, and this sensor will give you information about the same entities, uh, th so that's a redundant information that's very useful because every yeah. sensor you works differently in different environmental conditions, Absolutely. but more important for this sensor it gives you non-line of sight information, which means that now I can see... If the car's around the corner. Exactly, and yeah. what the car in front of the uh, truck ahead of me is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I can wow. track entities that I cannot see with my eyes and the other sensors cannot That's see. That's a huge breakthrough, isn't it? It, it really is, is. It is very important. Yeah. And also, the, uh, it can also, the other difference is that every other, car, every other sensor it needs to guess what is happening around it. It yeah. basically receives input uh, by either bouncing signals on top of uh, the, the uh, things around it yeah. or by passively receiving images yeah. and has to, you, do ha you have to do post-processing to kind of figure out what is actually going on. Yeah. In, in, with vehicular communications, we don't have to guess. The other, all the other entities that support the technology will tell you what they're doing. Yeah. They tell you 10 times a second uh, where they really? are exactly, how fast they're going, which direction, yeah. And that's very useful deterministic information that you, by combining with other things, yeah. you, get, you get better safety overall. Will this work over a 4G network or do we have to wait for 5G to come along? It's really being developed as a parallel track to both. It, really? is, it works, it's been defined today. Yeah. It works with LTE networks. Yes. It will uh, work with 5G networks. But really it is defined as, as independent of either of them. Yeah. So it uses technology from, uh, from both 5G, 4G and 5G tracks, yeah. but it's independent in the sense that also does not depend on any network. You don't need an, a, a network at all yeah. to make this work. Yeah. Of course, that was a, a fundamental requirement because the, the, we need the safety feature to exist even out of coverage in the middle of nowhere when you don't have towers around. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You can't just have a huge blind spot every time you're not on the network. Exactly. Yeah. When yeah. do you think we'll see this turning up in actual production vehicles? So we are in uh, the process of developing this yeah. uh, right now. So yeah. as I said, the specification is uh, just finishing uh, actually in a couple of weeks in uh, 3GPP plenary. Yeah. Um, we are building this in a commercial chipset uh, which uh, we are going to be able to do trials with uh, by the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see now where the market matures. So we are we're doing everything to be ready for the market yeah. when it is ready. And we think in the next two to three years, we will, we will see this happening. Fantastic. Really, really interesting stuff. And you can see how this is actually going to be sort of a key differentiator for the auto manufacturers, isn't it? If you could be the first 
uh, auto manufacturer to implement a specification which literally allows you to see round corners, that's going to be something which is going to really add value to their products, isn't it? It, it is, uh, but of course, on the other hand, it does require network effects. Sure. So the, the you know one car doing it doesn't doesn't yeah. help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, we need the industry to move uh, all uh, all together, yeah. uh, and uh, there will be the, the more cars that support it, the, be, the better the benefit yeah. from it is. Yeah, absolutely. Really interesting stuff, George. Thank you so much for explaining it to me. All right, you're welcome.